Aloha everyone, what is really good my dudes? Today is December 14th, 2020, we got another RuneScape update for y'all. Today we see the release of the new quest Violet is Blue 2, as well as another Ninja Strike. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video, let's go. <laughs> Alright guys, it's that time of year. Once again, Christmas is back around, and that means we've got a sequel to the Violet is Blue quest, Violet is Blue 2. While it is almost Christmas, Yeti Town has not gotten with the program and given their town that Christmas touch. So it is up to you and Violet to find out exactly what's going on and redecorate the town. While this is essentially a Christmas event, the quest Violet is Blue 2 is a permanent piece of content that will remain forever. So you don't necessarily have to do it right now, it'll always be there for you. Now in order to start, you need to have completed the previous quest Violet is Blue, and other than that there are no requirements. So to get started, you want to head over to the White Wolf Mountain and talk to Posty Pete outside of the portal. And that is all you really need to know to get started on Violet is Blue 2. That said, we're going to move on over to the Ninja Strike and see what's been changed with today's update. So let's go ahead and check it out. Starting off, we got a bunch of improvements to Diango, as well as the costume room. So using your search function in the bank will now also display any results from Diango storage, so long as those items can be withdrawn into the backpack. They fixed some inconsistent tooltip styling between the bank and Diango items, increased the size of icons, at least on mobile, fixed a bug where the interface would sometimes prevent players from seeing all the search results, moved the search bar to the top of the interface on mobile, replaced the word inventory with backpack, the cancel search button is no longer present if there's no active search, improved the messaging when trying to withdraw items that are already either owned or stored elsewhere. And the new keybind has been added to activate search. In English and German worlds, S. In French worlds, R. And in Portuguese worlds, B. And finally, a new right click or long press option has been added to the item slots in the costume room interface. This is going to allow you to deposit or withdraw all items in a set at the same time. Moving on, the ninjas have also added the Golden Reaper title. You can earn this title by completing all collection logs for bosses. This is a hidden title with an accompanying achievement, and those who achieve this feat will receive a global broadcast. Note that you're not required to complete the Insane Fallen Angel achievement, which includes obtaining all intricate chests from Next Angel of Death. Moving on to some general quality of life ninja strikes, players are now going to receive login messages and updates for their invention machines, whether they finished processing inputs, ran out of secondary inputs, or ran out of charges. These can be toggled on or off in the login messages or notification messages option in the menus. Auto disassemblers will now display the correct processing time for items that are disassembled in batches, such as ammunition. The mechanized siphon interface has been updated to have more space and better readability. To account for the bait and switch relic effect, the separate deposit all options for different fish have been consolidated into one option in the deep sea fishing hub and manifest VIP for port banks and deposit boxes. And the NPC who combines your jellyfish at the Deep Sea Fishing Hub has been given a name, a backstory, and a minimap icon. That said, not only did we get a quest and a ninja strike, we also got another yak track this time around. And it is called The Night Before Christmas. This will run from December 14th until January 24th, much like any other yak track. It's a very similar process, various different tasks up to 50 to unlock all of the various cosmetics and rewards. There's a free track and a premium track, which requires two bonds to unlock. Or if you have the Premier Club, you get it for free. And you can get a bunch of things like the Permafrost Knight outfit, as well as the new Yak, which looks a lot like Rudolph, and a whole plethora of other cosmetic rewards. There are some changes with the way tasks work this time that are very noteworthy. First off, they've scaled a lot of those tasks that were the most tedious down. Agility tasks will now allow you to complete any agility course instead of being scaled to your level. And they've also included Ape Atoll and Agility Pyramid to the list of courses you can do. And the Anachronia Agility course will now give you progress points per segment of the course since it's such a large course. 
In a similar vein, Dungeoneering will now allow you to complete any level of floor, regardless of your level. The quantity of items for herb lore and crafting tasks no longer scale with your level, so all players must carry out the same amount of actions. And the quantities for the herb lore specifically have been significantly reduced, bringing down the cost to complete them. Summoning tasks as well are now less restrictive and allow you a wider range of pouches. Construction, archaeology, and smithing tasks have been changed completely into a general gain XP in those skills tasks. So you have complete freedom on those tasks to train however you want, you just need to earn an X amount of XP. They've also added two new tasks. One is a present hunt task unique to only this track. We're going to track down presents all over Gilinor using a set of magical jingle bells. And they've also added the earn marks of war task, which is simply as it sounds, earn marks of war, which will require you to kill bosses. A couple of miscellaneous improvements to close this part out is that the batch overload recipe will now count towards five progress instead of one since you're making five potions. The divine conversion relic will now correctly advance divination tasks. Corrupt mage logs will now count towards fire making. Wabagongs will work with fishing. Wabagong oil will work with cooking. Cremation will work with prayer. And finally, the great white shark will now count with both fishing and cooking. And finally, having said all of that, that will encompass your main game update. We are going to finally shift over to the patch notes and there's still some juicy stuff there. So let's just jump right into it. Starting off, we got some changes to the recent boss, Raksha. So they have decreased the base damage of his attacks that scale with the shadow energy. And to compensate, they have increased the power buff that he gets with infusing his shadow anima. It is up from 0.5% to 1%, resulting in a 100% damage increase at 100 energy, up from 50%. This means that the maximum damage he can do has remained unchanged. This only means that the minimum damage is less punishing. And they have also decreased the rockfall damage that happens on phase transition. A couple of other fixes, his tail chain no longer blocks player movement so you can bladed dive between pools easily. Fixed an issue with the blank screen that would appear if you died transitioning to phase 4. The enhanced fleeting, laceration, and blast diffusion boots will no longer repair into their non-degraded versions. Raksha will no longer get stuck in an animation cycle if you die with immortality during the shadow bomb attack cycle. Mutated barge bleeds will no longer incorrectly be halved after the first hit. They fixed an issue that was causing players to get stuck under Raksha both during and after the final phase of the encounter. And they've increased the base hit chance or the affinity from 45 to 55 when using melee against Raksha, so melee is more accurate now. Raksha will no longer override his melee attack animation with a walk animation if the player moves out of melee range. And finally, Raksha will no longer change target randomly in duo mode and will instead focus one target until provoked. And lastly, to close out, a couple of other improvements. The Desert Pantheon Aura can now be reused once a double XP event has concluded, and players once again can choose the color of their beards and hairstyles in the appearance interface. That is it for your patch notes. Links to everything discussed in this video will be down in the description below. Head on over there, check them out if you wish to do so. With that, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things RuneScape related, hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Aloha.